When evil rears its ugly head When depravity is on display When innocence is callously stolen away Let there be broken heart in peace and let there be hope Sometime, I guess it was about five years ago, I was told over the telephone that there was a dog at the local animal shelter where I lived that absolutely 100% had to be euthanized. And they gave me very strict instructions that I was not to interfere. They said, Lara, we know you have a big heart, but do not get in the way. This dog is at the end of his life and he has to be put to sleep. And I went to the animal shelter and he had been found about three or four days prior to that. and. Uh, he had been found on the side of the road with a tree branch over him lined with so many buzzards. The lady who rescued him said that it looked like the buzzards were going to break the branch of the tree. And either they were getting ready to eat him because he was so close to death or they were going to eat whatever he was eating. Anyway, he was about 25 to 30 pounds underweight. He had almost no hair on his body. He was covered in grease. He had sarcoptic mange and eye infection, ear infection, heartworm, and pneumonia. And when I got to the animal shelter, it was like looking at the dog version of a concentration camp. It was absolutely horrific. And I'm as clear as day, as a new Christian, I heard the Lord speak to me and he said, lay hands on that dog and pray. And I started to pray. I put my hands through the dog pen, through the fence, and I heard the Lord speak again. And he said, no, go inside the dog pen. And I rolled my eyes at the Lord, which I don't ever recommend to anyone. And I said, what difference does it make? But I chose to obey. And I went inside the dog pen. I knew by the way he walked up to me that he was supposed to live and not die. And I took him against the shelter orders out of the shelter, put him in my car, drove across the river to a different, to a neighboring state where I needed to do something. And I'm standing on the street corner. People are staring at me thinking that I've horrifically abused this dog, which I obviously hadn't. And a homeless man who looked as homeless as a homeless person can look. He absolutely, he looked like he had not lived inside in a very, very long time. He was attracted to Red. He was drawn to him. Actually, he was really drawn to the Lord, which I later discovered. We started talking, and for some reason, I invited the man to my church that night. Never in a million years did I think he would come, and he came. He showed up with his knapsack on a cold winter night, and he came to church, and after a little while, he said that he had to go. He didn't want to stay for the whole service. He was going to sleep outside by the river in the cold, cold, cold winter night. And I happened to have an extra coat in my car, so I took him to my car. And on the way to the car, he told me a story. And it was absolutely gut-wrenching. He said that he had been in a war, that he had been shot, that God had saved his life so that he could see his wife again, but that she and several of their children got in the car one morning and she was drunk. And they um, were all killed. And he said that the day I met him, which was the same day I got read out of the animal shelter, he said that he was thinking about committing suicide. And he said that he was walking down the street and he heard the Lord speak to him. And God told him to turn around and come talk to me. And he said never in a million years that I think the answer would come in the form of a mangy dog. What a lot of people still don't know is my history. And I had decided years ago to kill myself. So God saved my life, brought me to this doggy, and saved his life, brought us to the homeless man and helped save his life. And shortly thereafter, I would say a month or two later, I woke up one morning and read the dog um, was coughing up or throwing up blood every 20 to 30 seconds. It was, it was unreal. I was covered in blood. The car was covered in blood. Everything was covered in blood. And I was so new to Christianity, but fortunately, I was getting very grounded in the Bible. And I started quoting scriptures out loud and praying and praising the Lord and refusing to let Satan take this dog's life. And I dropped him off at the emergency room, the emergency vet room, <laughs> and left him there. And I went to church. 
and I was covered in blood. I was in my pajamas. The pastor, who didn't know me very well at the time, Pastor Freddie, God bless him, he's my father in Christ. He um, pointed me to the place where I could get some clothes, and I changed. And shortly thereafter, I sat down in a church pew, and again, I heard the Lord speak to me as clear as day. And you got to understand, I'm 100% Jewish. I grew up in a Jewish family that didn't believe in God. I became an atheist and then an agnostic. And then I was just miraculously saved one day on the beach. I was broken in my early 20s and I went to a public restroom and all I did was cry out four words. I said, please God help me. I went back to the beach and there was a piece of white crumpled up paper on the beach that looked like garbage and I picked it up and it was a prayer. And it said, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Let the Holy Spirit fill me with all of your peace and all of your joy. Help me to become the person that you want me to be, to walk in your path, to do your will, and to glorify your name. And that night, on my hands and my knees, I spoke the prayer. And Jesus Christ came into my heart, and the Holy Spirit came inside of me, and I was saved. And so X amount of years later now, which really wasn't that many years, um, actually it was a bunch of years because I never got into church and never got into the Word of God. Here I am sitting in a church pew with that background, <laughs> a background of complete brokenness because a lot of things happened to me and I did a lot of things that were just wrong and deadly basically. And there I am sitting in the church pew with red in the hospital throwing up blood and I heard the Lord speak to me and he said, I've healed your dog, now heal my people. And I know that I as a human being can't heal anyone or anything, but I know that with a surrendered heart to the Lord that he can work through my heart and reach a lost and dying and broken world and that he can heal and he can save. And about eight months later, I ran into the homeless man on a park bench in very close to the same place I had first met him and I showed him pictures, the before and after pictures of my dog Red and he was absolutely blown away and we held hands and we prayed together and he went back through his life and asked the Lord to forgive him for all of his wrongdoings and he forgave those he needed to forgive and I ran into him a week later and the light was back in his eyes and I have to say that ever since God has used me and Red and Red's testimony an unbelievable amount of times to touch lives and over time he brought more and more dogs what I call miracle dogs miracle cases into my life and used those dogs to touch more people and ultimately what started off as a rescue group became a full-fledged ministry and my life and my heart are 100 percent dedicated to the lord and uh, that's it there may be no words in the midst of the valley but peace be still is whispered there come rest on something sturdier than this life Let there be peace for the broken hearted peace.